This video is going to introduce you to Flashline, a student portal here at Kent State University that you are going to be using throughout your time as a student that is very, very important for you to know and to understand. Now we're going to be covering a couple of topics today, so if you'd like to skip ahead to something in particular, please check out the comments section and click that link to take you directly to the topic that you're interested in learning about. So to begin, you need to log in. You'll see that I'm here on the kent.edu homepage. From this page, you want to navigate over to the lightning bolt. Here you'll see it says Flashline Login and you will select that link. This brings us to the Flashline Login page. Now from here you're going to need your username and your password. Your username is the first part of your Kent email address. This should have been given to you um, via your admission letter and you would also have received in that letter slash email your student ID number which is going to be needed for your password. Now if any given time you don't know either your ID number or your email address you can reach out to us at infocolumbiana at kent.edu that's infocolumbiana at kent.edu and we can get that answered for you. But what you'll do is you will place your username in the username box and then you will provide the password. Now the first time you log into Flashline it is going to utilize a default password. The default password is going to be the first three letters of your birth month in lowercase. So that's the first three letters of your birth month in lowercase. The last two numbers of your birth year. The last two numbers of your birth year and then the last five numbers of your Kent State student ID number. The last five numbers of your Kent State student ID number. What you'll do, you will put it into the password box and click login. Now before we go to the next screen, I'd like to point out on this screen, there is a way for you to retrieve your username if you've forgotten it using this link. And there's also a way for you to retrieve your personalized, customized password that you're going to provide on the next screen. So what will happen when you click login is it will take you into a screen to get you set up for the first time as a new student. That next screen is going to request that you provide us with an alternate email address. That email address should be one that you check regularly and use because that's going to be what your forgotten username or password will be sent to should you get locked out of Flashline. And it'll really save you some time and energy to be able to access that information quickly um, through an email that is easy for you to actually to get into and, and navigate. Sometimes students will use emails um, that they don't check regularly or they've forgotten how to even log into because they're afraid of being spammed. I assure you this is not for that purpose. This is nothing more than a way for you to retrieve a lost username or password. Your registration page is also going to ask you to set up three security questions you have a variety of questions to choose from and then you will select the answer and then finally you will create a password and there will be a series of um, guidelines letting you know what that password should include and should exclude in order for you to move forward in your um, registration process and I would encourage you to take a screenshot of that page or make sure you write it down because you're going to need that information moving forward should you ever get locked out of Flashline what will happen then is you will be taken to the Flashline welcome page. Here is the Flashline welcome page and I'm not going to spend time going over everything in Flashline today because this is something that would take us a very very long time to cover but what I do want to do is give you the highlights of things you really need to know now as a new student to make sure that you're not missing anything and are able to adequately access the information you need to be a successful student. Let's start with email. So up here in the top right is a link to your Kent State email address. This is a Gmail account so you can always access it through Flashline but it's very easy to uh, put onto your phone and to be checked there. Kent State email is the official way we communicate with students so it is very important you're checking your email regularly. Our advice to incoming students is that you're checking it at least daily because if you are not, you are not going to be receiving all the messages you should be. 
You always want to be paying attention to messages from your professors, from messages from your academic advisors, because they're typically going to contain important announcements and information you need to know. You also get a lot of campus announcements about events that are taking place and services available to you as a Kent State student. Now another thing about your Kent State email that's important to know is we would encourage you and actually would um, request that as you're communicating with us, whether it be staff, your advisor, your program director, or your faculty slash professor, that you use your Kent State email address. And that's because when we receive an email from your Kent State email address, we can confirm who it, who it is that we're speaking to. And it really helps us to um, keep your information secure. So it's for your own protection that we ask you do that. Just remember that can always be accessed here in Flashline. It's a Gmail account, very easy to put onto your phone. The next thing we want to take a moment to look about and talk about is something called Blackboard. Blackboard Learn, which is this icon with the uppercase and lowercase b. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open that in another tab so we can take a closer look at this. Blackboard is our online learning platform. So this is how we teach our online courses or courses that are being taught remotely. And so it's very important you know how to access this, especially as more and more students are choosing to take online courses. So you'll see here as the page loads, we're coming into the Blackboard homepage. And for students who are coming out of high school, you're probably familiar with something called Google Classrooms. This is somewhat similar. It's really just kind of a bigger and better version of that. It just has more options. And so you'll probably have some familiarity with how it works um, just getting in here and navigating it. For those that have never used a system like this, what it does is it allows you to receive content from your professor, whether that's lectures, announcements, it allows you to do discussions with your professor and your uh, classmates, which oftentimes are part of course requirements. It has a means for professors to stream video, there's just a variety of tools available in here. Now, from the home page, what you'll do is you'll see that your courses will be listed here in the My Courses box. Now, I'm not currently registered to take any online or uh, Kent State courses, so I don't have any actual courses listed here. But I do have some courses that I taught a couple years ago. And so what I'm going to do is navigate into this DKS First Year Experience course so you can at least get some sense of what a course might look like like, and have some idea of perhaps how to navigate it for the first time. Now what you're going to be seeing was not actually designed for an online course. It was supposed to be a supplement for a traditional uh, in-seat course. And you may find that some of your professors who are teaching traditionally will still utilize Blackboard to share documents and to um, share uh, grades or uh, it could be a variety of things and that's what I was doing with this class so clicking that link think of it in your mind as you're now going to class and so here we are in the actual class things are organized by folders if you're going to be taking a traditional online class those folders may be organized by weeks which is pretty common where your professors uh, may say okay week one would be this folder, week two, week three, and there may be something that says like, get started, uh, start here. Uh, you may have um, a resources folder um, where your professor will link you to to go get resources for your, your particular class. Now, you can go into these folders. Um, once inside, there may be additional folders. There may be links to things you need to read. There may be links to things you need to watch. For instance, like a video or going to other websites. Um, remember, a, a traditional online class does not, so by saying traditional, I mean a class that your schedule says is 100% online, does not have set meeting days or times. And so because of that, you're not gonna be meeting with your fellow classmates at a strict time. So it's not gonna be like every Monday and Wednesday at uh, 10 o'clock, you meet with your classmates through this technology and have class, but rather what it means 
is your professor is going to provide you with your assignments and then you're going to be instructed to complete those assignments by a deadline. So for example, if this was week one, your professor may have um, a, a document that says uh, to do. And from there, they may list out, read these chapters in your textbook, uh, watch these lectures, interact with these videos, and there's a variety of things they can have you do. But then they may say, by Wednesday at midnight, do your first discussion post. Now, the first thing that might cause you to question is, what in the world is a discussion post? And what do I need to do for that? And for that, I always want to refer you back to your course syllabus. Your course syllabus is so important regardless if your course is online or if your course is traditionally being taught in a classroom. That syllabus is going to tell you the expectations for your class. It's going to give you, um, typically it will give you uh, deadlines and a rubric even for what's expected for your assignments. So what I would encourage you to do is to go back and go look at your syllabus, read what the expectations are for this discussion post. And then most professors will actually link you. They'll be um, where it says do your discussion post. That'll be like an active link that you would click and it would take you to the discussion board. And from here, your professor would give you the um, prompt for your discussion and you would be responsible for responding to that prompt and to your fellow classmates based on whatever your instructor is, is asking that you do. And the important part about this is that you're doing it by the deadlines. So if your first discussion post needs to be completed by Wednesday at midnight, the beauty of a 100% online course is you have all the freedom of the world in the world to do that class um, really on your own schedule, so long as you get it done by Wednesday at midnight in that deadline that's been given by your professor. The risk, I would say, of an online class is that you have all the time in the world or not all the time in the world, but you have the ability to kind of set your own schedule for doing the work. And um, some students can struggle with that. So with an online course, make sure that you're disciplining yourself and you're really making uh, it a point to log into that class often and to be checking on deadlines and to make sure that you are completing assignments when they're due. So that's a lot to say about Blackboard. Believe it or not, there's a lot more we could say about this. I really just wanted to give you an overview of how an online course might work and what Blackboard essentially looks like. You will learn much more about this, obviously, in your online course. And if you are taking the first year experience Destination Kent State class, that class covers it um, very thoroughly as well. So Blackboard can be accessed through this link here. There is a phone app you can download. Um, I think that's very helpful, especially as you're just kind of, you know, if you're out and about and you just want to go check your assignments. Uh, if you're out and about and you want to read your uh, classmates' um, discussion posts. The one thing I would discourage you from doing is using the app on, say, your phone to uh, actually write out responses or um, to actually complete assignments. I would definitely encourage you to use your computer where you have a larger screen, a larger uh, view. You can actually type and not use your thumbs because remember what you're doing for that is going to be graded and so it's very important that grammar and things like that are um, are done well. Alright, the next thing we want to basically dis or quickly discuss is how to navigate to your schedule. So if you've gone through our STAR program and you met with your advisor you now have a schedule and your advisor probably told you how to access your schedule but you get a lot in that day and it's very um, understandable if you've forgotten how to do that. So let me show you. You're going to go to Student, Courses and Registration, click that link, and that brings you to this Courses and Registration box. And from here, you'll see a link that says View or Print Course Schedule and Purchase Textbooks. That's how you get to your schedule. It's that easy. And what I would encourage you to do is you see this little pin. I would click that pin button because doing that will put it in your dashboard. And let me show you what this will look like. If you put it in your dashboard, it'll automatically include those important links that you need to find quickly so that you don't have to go look for them through all the variety of links here on the left. So again, getting to your student schedule, student, 
courses and registration, viewer print course schedule and purchase textbooks. To access it, you simply click the link, you will choose the semester and click submit. It will bring up your schedule and it will list for you everything you're taking and you can read it by column. Your courses will be in this column. The title of that course will be in that column. The campus, whether it's online or a traditional course. Location, so if you're taking a traditional course um, that's in seat, it's going to tell you what building that your class is going to take place in and then it's also going to give you a room number so you know exactly where to go. It'll tell you the days. Every day of the week is assigned a single letter. So for instance, if you see two letters in the days column, M and W, that means you're going to be on campus two days for that class on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday would be T and Thursday would be R. And that does confuse some people because here in the days column, they may see TR and they think to themselves that class is on Thursday. That is true, but that class is also on Tuesday. So you wanna make sure you understand what's being um, represented with those letters. Friday would be F, Saturday would be S, though here in Columbiana County, we currently do not offer any classes on Sunday. Your time would be listed here, your instructor here, Meeting dates, so that would be when the semester begins and when the semester ends. Our semester um, for fall 20, you're looking at here, would begin August 27th. That's going to be different for each semester. Um, the fall semester will then end in December. So it's important you know, um, obviously, when you need to be starting and finishing your class. Credit hours here, so on and so forth. There will also be a button. Um, listed around here that you can click to access your textbooks. Um, from that link it will take you to our Barnes & Noble page. Barnes & Noble is our campus bookstore partner and from there it will tell you the books you need for your courses. From that page it will show you pricing and then you can determine where and how you would like to purchase your textbooks. Uh, you may all, always come to the physical bookstore um, to purchase your textbooks, but you can do it online. Typically there's offerings from renting books to purchasing books, and you can rent a used book, you can rent a new book, you can purchase a uh, used book. Um, I mean there's, there's a variety of options and those options come with different prices, so that's one of the things you're going to want to look at. And if you have questions, you can always reach out to your advisor or to the person teaching that class. Lastly, there will be a green clock icon in this registration and tuition and deadlines column that is really helpful because if you click that link, and I'm sorry I can't show you what it looks like because I'm not personally scheduled for anything, it will take you into a screen that includes deadlines for um, a couple of things. It'll give you the last day to drop a course. Now, dropping a course means that you're not issued a grade and it never goes on your permanent transcript. You typically, and I'm putting air quotes here, you can't see it, but you typically have two weeks to make that decision if you are taking a full semester course. Now, don't take my word for that. You would need to come and check the actual registration deadline in here in your schedule. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, reach out to your advisor for help. Because what can happen is if you wait too long to drop a class, your professor is going to be required to issue a grade and that grade is going to be something called a W for withdrew. Now, a withdrawal grade does not impact your GPA either negatively nor positively, but it will go on your permanent record and it will show that you attempted the course. If you earn too many withdrawal grades, it can potentially impact your financial aid. And so it's always important for you to consult with your advisor before you make a decision to withdraw. Um, withdrawing from a class in a semester can impact your actual um, financial aid for that semester as well. And so it's also important that you consult with financial aid before making that final decision. The other thing to consider is the longer you wait to drop a course, the less money as a refund you're going to receive for the tuition on that course. So for instance, if you're in a full semester course, you typically have one week to change your mind, and in changing your mind, you will receive 100% of your tuition back for that course. 
that will go down each week. So the second week it goes to 80%, it then goes to 65%, and then to 60%, and then to 0%. And you, can, you don't have to wonder what those deadlines are or um, what the refunds are. You can come in here, click the green icon in your schedule, and it will show you that for each class you're scheduled to take. So that is your schedule, which can be viewed here under courses and registration. And again, I recommend you pin that for easy navigation in the future. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see that this will bring you to grades and transcripts. Now from here, you can access midterm grades. Midterm grades are issued every fall and spring semester. They never go on your permanent record. They're more of a progress report, but that can be so very helpful because it's letting you know how you're doing about halfway through the semester. And so what you're going to want to do when midterm grades are released is come here, click the link, and then it would literally show you your grades and your midterm GPA. And from there, you can start to make some plans of action. You can um, you know, go back to your professor if you're struggling in a course, or perhaps if your grade's lower than you expected it to be, talk to them about strategies for improving your grade. Um, you can reach out to advisors. We can connect you with uh, support services, with things like tutoring, so that you can um, receive some additional help. Uh, you know, if in a specific course you're struggling, we might be able to link you to a tutor, which can be very helpful. Needless to say, midterm grades are important, and you should be checking them. Final grades, a very similar process. You click that link, you would pick the semester, click submit, it will show you your grades. Now final grades do get reported on your final permanent record and so therefore they're very important and obviously we want to encourage you to do your best with every class you take here at Kent State. You'll also notice from here you can pin each of these to your dashboard to make them easy to find. Now your transcript your transcript is a, it, you, you have access to what is your official record here at the university. Now it's going to tell you it's unofficial because you can't go to this screen and print it and send it to another university and transfer. They're not going to accept that. They're going to need it to come from our registrar's office. But what you need to understand is that everything you would see on this screen is going to be the same thing that you would see on your official transcript. It will break out your courses by semester. So if you are starting uh, in fall 2020, it will show you all the classes you're taking that semester. And then once you've completed those courses, it will add your grades and it will show you your GPA for that semester. What it will then do is with each semester afterwards, it will continue to show the classes, the grades, show your semester GPA, but it will then average your GPA from every semester into something called your cumulative GPA, which is just your total GPA of all the courses you have taken. And so that can always be accessed right here through this view unofficial transcript link. And that is very, very important. You should always know at the conclusion of each semester what your grades are. And remember, for instance, if you're in a class that's using Blackboard, your grades in Blackboard technically are not official. Your grades that are listed here, here, and here are official. This is where you want to go to access those. Scrolling down, GPS Audit and Plan. This is another tool I would encourage you to pin. Um, I don't have time in this video to go through what GPS Audit and Plan can do for you. Suffice it to say that this is one of the most important tools you have in your toolbox here at Kent State University. The GPS audit and plan allows you to track um, your own progress towards graduation. So it will automatically pull up your information based on your student ID. And from here, it will list information about what major you are currently um, pursuing. And if that's incorrect, obviously you would need to change that. Based on what major you're pursuing, it will list every single requirement for that major in here and for that degree and then it will literally uh, track your progress by crossing off courses as you complete them so this is just an incredible tool to make sure you are on track for graduation hence graduation planning system 
each semester you meet with an advisor to schedule your courses and to discuss your goals. If your advisor is not looking at this with you, please ask that they do. Um, because I can tell you, for instance, when I meet with my advisees, this is the screen that we spend the most time in because this is the tool advisors use to see if you are ready to graduate. When you are ready to graduate, you've completed all the degree requirements, it's going to show here in GPS. Well, the great news is you have access to this tool just like we do. And so you want to know how to utilize this. If you are taking the Destination Kent State First Year Experience course, um, an advisor typically will come in and explain how to utilize this program in one of your class sessions, give you a basic overview, and then each time you meet with that advisor moving forward, you're going to learn more about it. So GPS, critically important, and I'll encourage you to pin this and spend some time in that should you, um, not should you, you're going to need it moving forward, and you're going to want to know how to utilize it. Change my major. If you do find that your major is incorrect, here's a link for changing it. Um, if you're unsure about going through that process, reach out to your advisor and they can walk you through it and explain it. It's not difficult, but if you haven't done it, it can seem a little um, obscure. If you'd like to explore all the programs and degrees here at Kent State University, you can do that through this link. University Catalog. Now, in years past, we actually used to print the University Catalog. It was a it was a big book, very thick. Um, in the catalog is included all the policies and procedures for that academic year. So you'll see it as the official document of record for undergraduate and graduate programs, courses, academic policies, and special programs. Currently is only available online, um, but you have access to it through Flashline. And this is so important because if you are starting in the 2020-21 school year, either summer, fall, or spring. It means that these are the requirements that are um, you are bound to and by regarding your degree, your chosen degree. And this protects you in a lot of ways. So for instance, if you are pursuing um, criminology and justice studies and you're starting in the year 2020 or 21, if that degree changes a variety of program requirements in the next two years, guess what? you're not going to have to take those courses that are being um, implemented with the change because you're bound by the requirements in the 2021 catalog. And you might go, what are those requirements? Well, if we go to programs and we look for criminology and justice studies, let's say you're going to do a Bachelor of Arts, those requirements are listed right here. And then from here, you can look at course descriptions, you can look at concentrations, et cetera, et cetera. This is a great tool to use in conjunction with your GPS audit and plan. So it's nice to have both of those. And I'll tell you one tool that I really like are the roadmaps because the roadmaps lay out for you all the courses you need in a semester by semester fashion. You're not required to follow the roadmap um, like perfectly but we as advisors use these to help guide you through the courses you should be taking and I think it can really be be a helpful tool to have in conjunction with your audit and plan. But the catalog also includes a lot of really important things regarding policies, things like academic forgiveness, um, GPA uh, procedures and policies and again all of this is at your fingertips here through Flashline. So another thing I would encourage you to pin because it is very, very helpful to know where it's at and how to navigate. Now let's go over and look at some information regarding financial aid. So I'm coming back over here to my student tab on the left and I'm going to go to this finances tab or link. And from here, if I scroll down, you'll see immediately you have a couple really helpful things. You have your account balance, which will be determined based on how many courses you're taking your flash cash balance. So this is money you can put on your Kent State ID. So for instance, if you are on campus and you need to print your final paper for a class and you don't, maybe you're like me, you don't have a printer at home, then you could go on campus with your ID, go into the library, and you can swipe that and print. And um, 
there's a cost for that, but that's what flash cash, cash is for. You can put money on your card and utilize it that way. Let's see, it'll tell you if you have any holds, which would be based on a balance. So if you have an unpaid balance, you may end up with a hold on your account, which will disallow you from either requesting a transcript be sent to another institution, or it could disallow you from registering from classes. Now if I scroll down to tuition and payments, here's how you can access some very important links. You can access your student account statement. This is a great way to just kind of get a high level view of your bill. What it will do is show all your charges in this box. It will show your estimated financial aid in this box. And then after your financial aid has been applied, it will let you know if you have a balance. And so this is something that is very, very helpful. And at the bottom, it'll include your schedule. So I would encourage you to access that and print it. You see there is a printer friendly version just to make it a little easier for you. So that is your print statement of student account. Student account summary by term is really helpful because what it will do is show you all the courses you're taking by semester. You'll see I have some courses here in the past I took. As an employee, I'm not required to uh, pay tuition here at the university, but this is a great way to track how much total money you are spending here uh, at Kent State. So it will show you all your charges and then any payments that have been made through financial aid or through cash uh, check or credit card by you, the student. If we scroll down, it will bring you to the financial aid page. Now, I'm only going to give you a very high level view of this because I'm not a financial aid counselor and I don't want to misadvise you. But what I can tell you is these links are very, very important. So here's where you can access your financial aid awards. This would be uh, scholarship, grants, and loans. Now, if you are going to be utilizing loans, you do have to accept or decline those aid awards. Needless to say, that can all be done through this link. I would encourage you to reach out to your financial aid counselor if you have specific questions on that process. My purposes today are just to show you how to get there. And again, I would pin that to your dashboard. I would also pin your aid enrollment plan. This is required, my understanding is it is required every year uh, to be completed. And uh, this is something that you, you answer some questions. Um, if, if you have questions about it, again, I would encourage you to reach out to your financial aid counselor to get clarity on that. So again, pin that. And if we go back up here, you can also pin these other links that we looked at and discussed. Um, just a couple more links to discuss with you before I wrap up the video. One is here in settings. So I would encourage you to come into your settings. Well, you can personalize your flash line. You can kind of change what your default landing page is. You can hide a variety of things. You can show your recommended campuses, select your color scheme. Those are all great. That's not why I'm bringing you in here, though. I want to bring to your attention something called flash alerts. Flash alerts are super helpful, um, and I would encourage you to sign up for them. Flash alerts is our way to communicate with students in the case of a campus closure or in case of a campus emergency. So for instance, if it's February and the East Liverpool campus is going to be closed due to weather, we will let you know through flash alerts whichever way you've asked us to notify you. You can receive that via email or through text. I personally receive it through a text message. Uh, you will never be spammed through this and it's just a really effective way to receive messages in a timely manner and then you don't have to wonder what's going on. Um, it's also a way for us to reach out to students if there is a campus emergency. Now I've been with the university 11 years. My name's Donald Bean as you can see at the top left. I've never um, seen flash alerts utilized because of a campus emergency and I hope I never do. But, for instance, if there would be a case where we needed to reach out to students quickly, Flash Alerts allows us to do that. And so I think it's very important that you as a student sign up for that so you can be notified if necessary. Now lastly, I'm going to come back into Students, or Student, and I'm going to go to Requests and Authorizations. And the last thing I want to talk to you today is about FERPA. So, FERPA stands for the Family Education Rights, Educational Rights and Privacy Act of 1974. It's something that 
um, restricts our ability to share information about you, the student, without your permission. And that's a really good thing. We want to handle your information with care and we want to maintain your privacy. That means if you are a student and your mom or dad calls and says, hey, I'm paying for so-and-so's tuition. I want to know her grades. I want to know his grades. We are not allowed to disseminate that information without your permission as a student. Or if you have a husband or wife or a significant other who uh, would like to receive information uh, about you um, or make decisions on your behalf, we cannot do that unless you grant them FERPA authorization, which can be done right here by clicking on this tab. Bear in mind you are under no obligation to give anyone uh, FERPA access or privileges, but you are welcome to. So you'll see I've given those privileges to my wife. Um, I was not required to, but I chose to. The decision is ultimately yours, but if you want somebody to be able to access that information, then you need to provide us with that permission. And with that, I will conclude um, this long-winded introduction to Flashline. Believe it or not, there's a lot more that can be said, but if you have a question, reach out to your advisor. If you don't know who your advisor is or just have a general question, you're always welcome to email us at infocolumbiana at kent.edu. I hope you found this helpful and have a wonderful day.